Hey guys, Joseph Babaifa here coming at you with a new video on the channel connecting you to your destiny once again. The child of Wududua's path. And if you haven't had the opportunity, please go ahead and tap on that subscribe button. So when we're talking about the Orisha Odudua, um, he's pretty obscure to say the least. More information has come out about him. We've been able to get some more clarity on him. I will also be putting a link um, about a video that we've done for Odudu on the channel previously because it kind of plays into what we're going to be talking about today. But what occurred was is that a question came in um, where presumably I would imagine the child of Odudua asked, um, can the child of Odudua go straight to Ifa, right? When we're talking about straight to Ifa, per se, um, it's somewhat misleading because to go straight to Ifa doesn't necessarily mean we just do Ifa and that's it. And that's kind of been the consensus with the children of Wodudua, especially the male children who have all the characteristics to become Bawalawo, is that at least within the New World practice, automatically they're going to be Bawalawos. Um, and we're going to delve into that today. So first and foremost, um, Wodudua's children are few and far between. Um, if you are a part of this uh, very selective, um, you know, uh, priesthood or, or following, uh, consider yourself special uh, because it is very selective, right? It, there are very few. It doesn't come out a lot. Even though technically we are all Omo Dudua, being that we follow uh, the culture of Ifa and um, the Yoruba culture and the spirituality of Ifa, being that Odudua is seen as the primordial ancestor, right? But we're talking about those who are specifically um, you know, spiritual descendants of Orula or reincarnations of him in this lifetime, right? Um, can they go straight to Ifa? When we're talking about this, one thing that cannot be understated, right, is that everyone should have their guardian Orisha received before becoming a Bawalawu. At least in the Afro-Cuban tradition, we have this practice. So for the child of Odudua, they may have a path of going straight to Ifa, but always first and foremost completing or fulfilling with their guardian Odisha. They would have to receive the Odudua um, icon or receive Odudua to be able to go through the Ifa pr process um, safely, soundly, and successfully, right? And that goes for any uh, child of any Odisha. You want to have your guardian Odisha before doing Ifa in any of its forms or, or fashions, right? So that, that's the most um, concise and quick answer to that question. Yes, they, uh, they do have a predisposition towards Ifa being that Odudua had so much to do um, with Orumila's process of even becoming a Bawalawo or vice versa. Um, but still, the child of Odudua has to receive Odudua before becoming a Bawalawo. So that's a pretty streamlined path, though. Um, and then we're going to get into a couple different takes on that, even with this, right? Um, some people have the concept that the child of Odudua should initiate himself in Orisha before doing Ifa. Um, if they were to do so, the Odu Irete Suga, which ironically is my Odu, and I've seen the scripture that really bases itself upon this, states that, you know, if the child of Odudua were to consecrate himself in Orisha prior to doing Ifa, it would be Obadala, right? And presumably the path or manifestation of Oshanla, which within the Afro-Cuban tradition is seen as a feminine path of Obatala, right? And it really comes from a story within um, Ire de Odura, where Oshanla saved Odudua and saved his reputation. And because of it, Odudua blessed her and said, you'll be the mother of all of my children. Um, so if the child of Odudua was to initiate um, into Orisha, it would be by way of Oshanla, and Odudua automatically would be their father, Orisha, being that that is that, uh, their actual guardian, Orisha, right? Um, some people have the debate that this is necessary or not. Um, I will say that for the gentleman who is trying to become a Walawo, it is much, much less common. And if they did decide not to initiate themselves in Orisha, before becoming a Bawalawo, being a child of Odudua, as long as they had Odudua received, it's perfectly acceptable. I know multiple people with this case where they received Odudua first, and then after that, they initiated themselves as Bawalawo, and they're doing just fine. Some people might want to go the extra mile, 
completely up to them. But I always feel that we need to take actions that are concise and necessary. And if a gentleman just wanted to receive odudua before initiating himself as a bawalawo, that's perfectly fine. When we're talking about the child of odudua initiating himself or themselves, because, uh, you know, women, I have met multiple female children of odudua as well. If they wanted to initiate themselves in Odisha, this is a possibility as well. Now, if they were to do so, the accepted method now would be that they would initiate themselves into Orisha by way of Obadala, like I said, by way of Oshanla and that manifestation, or Dudua still being their guardian Orisha and, and father, uh, father Orisha. Um, I recently was able to get my hands on some information that actually spoke of the different processes that used to go into actually crowning a child of Odudua directly. It does exist. It does exist even in the Afro-Cuban tradition. Now, whether it's ever going to be widely accepted or get implemented to a point where it's common, I do not know. If it hasn't happened within the last 50 to 100 years, I doubt whether it's ever actually going to happen. Now, things in this faith are always changing. Um, maybe a few like-minded people eventually could get together and maybe make this happen. It would maybe stir up some pots, but whatever is best for the client, the elder and the people involved in the initiation, if they feel comfortable with what they're doing, if they're prepared and they have the information to do so, um, you know, who, who, who am I or who is anybody to say otherwise, right? But as of right now, um, it is understood and it is accepted socially that a child of Odudua within the Afro-Cuban Lupumi tradition cannot be initiated directly within that Orisha, right? Um, if the person did want to actually go through with this, the best bet may be actually by going through the Orisha process in the Isheshe practice. Because from what I understand, in Nigeria, this is still seen quite common and uh, provides positive results. So for all the people that might be interested in crowning Odudua or initiating into Odudua directly, Isheshe may be the way to go. Um, I always provide both, both options because at the end of the day, it's your destiny and it's what you feel most comfortable with. Now, the thing is, if you do get initiated in an Isheshe practice and you do become an Olorisha by way of that practice, if you did want to interact or intermingle with Lukumi priests, there may be a stigma with that. It really depends on the people you're interacting with and how comfortable they feel with allowing you to be involved in their ceremonies, but that's on a case by case basis. But you should be married aware of this before you make those decisions so that you're not caught off guard. We're like, hey, I just initiated into Odisha the traditional way, and then you try to arrive at a local uh, practice, uh, you know, Odisha initiation, and they're like, hey, um, you know, we, we might not feel comfortable with you being present. Unfortunate. But at the same time, legitimate, everybody has to respect um, each other's criteria, especially within each other's homes. So you definitely want to be aware of who you're planning on working with in the future, whatever your steps may be. But these are all the things you may run into, right? So we touched on the importance of having um, the guardian orisha before doing Ifa, if that's the person's path. Um, another thing that uh, would maybe be ideal um, even for those possibly even doing Ifa, um, is possibly even receiving, um, you know, their Obatala icon or even Oshanla, because in the Afro-Cuban tradition, Oshanla is actually a deity that's given completely separate um, from Obatala. So it would be ideal that anybody who is a child of Odudua ultimately has this icon as well, depending on how you want to define it. Some people will say, hey, Obatala in itself is Oshanla, being that that is his name, of Orishanla or Oshanla, which means great or big Orisha. Other people say there is a, another way of preparing um, Oshanla and um, it should be received that way. Always refer back to lineage, but these are all the various methods that could be used to receive this deity. But based on Irete Otura um, or Irete Suga, it says that the children of Odudua have a special affinity with the Orisha Oshanla. Um, in that feminine aspect and, and should ideally receive her, him, however you want to define it, right? So we touched on the importance of that. 
even though it's not necessarily a prerequisite to be able to do Ifa, because I know plenty of Bawalawo sons of Odudua who don't have this deity either. So just another way you have to see what responds to your faith and what makes you feel uh, fulfilled. And if that's something you'd like to incorporate, that's perfectly fine. Um, there have been cases that I have seen not only with Odudua, but with other deities where they received their guardian Orisha after doing uh, the Fa ritual of becoming Babalawo. And unfortunately, things have not gone positively, right? It really, I really make emphasis on you need to have your guardian Orisha before stepping into uh, the Fa ceremony because you want to have that fulfillment. You want to have that, uh, that stability from an Orisha standpoint before you enter into um, the Fa ceremony. Um, I won't get into details about the things I've seen, but it has, um, you know, uh, had some really, really negative, possibly life-threatening, um, you know, ramifications if someone does not receive their guardian Odisha before doing Ifa. So we talked about having seen some of the uh, Odudua information in the Afro-Cuban tradition, um, that it is, uh, you know, there. Um, whether it's going to be accepted or not, that that's only going to, uh, time is only going to be the one to tell that. Um, we spoke about the Afro-Cuban tradition with Odudua. We spoke about that. Now, another um, step for some people is that if you do come out a child of Odudua, maybe you don't have these great aspirations of becoming an Olorisha or becoming a Bawalawu. Maybe you're somebody that just wants to receive Odudua um, after receiving your hand of Ifa, of course, and you'll be perfectly fine with that. And I've met multiple people like that as well, where they have their hand of Ifa, they come out a child of Odudua, and that's all they want to receive. Um, they receive Odudua, and then they lead happy lives. They attend to their guardian Orisha as much as they can. And, you know, they fulfill with Orumila and the Orishas they have received. And that is, you know, the manifestation of their religious experience um, in this lifetime. So these are all the different ways, right? So if you want to just receive Odudua, if he's your guardian Orisha, that's perfectly fine and you can stop there. For somebody who has the path or des the desire within the Afro-Cuban tradition to become an Olorisha priest, um, within this tradition, Oshanla, crowning that aspect of, uh, of Obadala is going to be your best bet. If you want to crown it direct, Isheshe practice might be the best bet. Um, if you are um, able to become a Babalawo and that is your desire, definitely receive Odudua, um, you know, before, uh, before doing so. And I would even recommend for the people that, um, who are planning on crowning Odisha, to receive Odudua even before crowning Odisha because you want to have your guardian Odisha um, stabilized within your spiritual being before you start assimilating other energies, especially when we're talking about the parts of the body that the Odisha ceremony involves. Um, and for those who want to be Bawalawu, definitely receive Odudua um, before doing Ifa. You could possibly receive uh, your Obadala icon as well as Oshanla, or you can do it afterwards. It's not a prerequisite before doing Ifa, but it is something you may want to receive eventually just being a child of Odudua. Now, some people are going to say, which Odudua, Joseph? Um, you know, we have the Odua of Ifa, which is confectioned by the Wawalawo, and we have the Odua of Orisha, which is uh, confectioned and given by our brother Odiades and Olorishas. Uh, which one is correct? Um, I've mentioned this before, and when I first heard it, I thought it was so radical, but at the same time, I thought it was beautiful. Um, this ceremony actually used to be done in conjunction between Bawalawo and Olorisha. Like a lot of the big ceremonies within um, our culture are done. I mean, there's not one ceremony of Ifa where an Olorisha is not present. There is not one ceremony of Orisha where a Bawalawo shouldn't be present. Um, and it's the same thing whether we look at the Itutu, um, the Onras, any of these big um, ceremonies, it usually takes this balance of Bawalawo, Oriate. Um, Olorisha priests, you know, we're all present performing different roles. And Odudua was one of those things. Um, I, I, actually, this deity used to be given in conjunction where the Bawalawo would be playing his role in the ceremony and the Oriate or the initiates of Odudua um, would be playing their role in the ceremony and it would be given in conjunction, right? Um, nowadays, we haven't seen that since the great, what I like to call the great schism of the religion happened after our uh, our brother Miguel Febles started implementing new uh, new rules and new methods. And we saw the separation that occurred with this deity where Ifa 
kind of uh, you know started um, dominating the the giving of Odudua, and even the Orisha aspect of Odudua was given separately from the Baalaos, and everything kind of just separated. Ideally, this deity should be given in conjunction, where technically those two ceremonies actually fall in line with each other. Um, to tell you which one is real and which one's legitimate. I really can't answer that because they're both parts to a much larger ceremony that used to be one. So um, for those that are planning on doing Ifa, I highly recommend um, that you do receive the one that is given by Ifa, being that you are going to be maneuvering within those circles, um, you know, just because you want to be able to function within that capacity. Um, I would say that ideally anybody that wants to receive Odudua, um, there are, if you don't receive it on that conjunctive status where everybody's present and everybody's fulfilling their roles and it's fulfilling those qualifications of Ifa and Orisha, you know, possibly receiving both or possibly receiving one or the other, whichever one responds most to your faith. But the one piece of clarifying information I can provide is that ceremony is meant to be done amongst uh, everyone whether it be Bawalawo or Diate, as well as Olorishas who received this deity as well. Everybody was present and it each had its steps to where it would fulfill both of those qualifications. And that's really all I can say in video. Um, but that's the most clarity we can provide on the child that will do as path. Um, someone asked this recently and um, it is something that a lot of people are trying to get clarity on because when you are a child, or, uh, uh, you know, an ancestor uh, or a, a celestial descendant of these deities that are a little uh, less popular, like Odudua, Olokun, Orishaoko, Inle, uh, Bawaluaye, you know, what is it that we do? So Odudua is definitely one of them. Um, my Odu speaks heavily about him. Irete Suga actually touches a lot on the process of within the Afro-Cuban tradition, how we move forward with the children of Odudua. But the most important thing is the initiate and um, them feeling comfortable about what they're doing. That's why we present all the different informations, whether it be Lukumi or Isheshe, so that the person is making the best decision for them and their spirituality, right? Because everyone has to, you know, have a clear conscience when it comes to their own destiny. So guys, we really appreciate um, you taking the time to watch our videos. Um, getting closer to 3,000 subscribers every day. Very humbling that, uh, you know, so many people are interested in Ifa and um, us providing this information and you guys finding it useful in your own spiritual routines and progress. Um, to schedule consultations with Joseph Baba Ifa, please go ahead and call 407 440 or visit BotanicaCandlesAndMore.com, where apart from consultations, you can find Orisha clothing as well as products to help you in your spiritual routine. If you haven't had the opportunity, please be sure to like, comment, share, and definitely subscribe. We're getting close to the 3,000 subscribers. Joseph Babaifa, myself, uh, genuinely uh, appreciates you. We've been getting um, quite a response from the channel, you know, to see so many people from uh, all over the world, uh, you know, watching the videos and, and gaining something positive from it is really gratifying on our behalf. Botanica Candles and more definitely appreciates all the support as well. And um, until next time, guys, like I said, we appreciate you. Wishing you nothing but the best. Please take care of yourselves. And uh, take care.